I, I choose the topic and then after that I have to go and research on the, I mean, the books. And then from those books, what is it exactly that I'm required to do? I just get confused when I get there. But I read then after reading, what is it exactly that I'm looking for? For me right. to start with my system literature review. Yes, sir. I see. I see. But then this is helpful um, because, you know, you're taking us forward. What is your... What, what do you think you should be doing? Because we want to help you right there now where you are. So you you choose a topic, you go and yes. read, the, read about the topic using, it sounds like you say using books, and now you don't know yes. what to do next. Um, good afternoon, Prof. It's uh, Shamalani here. Yes, um, yeah, in my case, uh, I'm an honors uh, student. Um, um, I was I was uh, doing uh, uh, the PYC 81, um, topic 11, and um, what, what were you doing? The topic 11 on on uh, um, his hesitancy of a COVID vaccine. Or oh, on on vaccines hesitancy. Oh, to vaccines. Oh, okay. Yes, I yeah. had chosen that 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 um, topic. Now my issue is I ended up um, uh, dropping the module because I became too overwhelmed, especially because um, the postponements of assignments. Um, I ended up um, having too many assignments to do within a short space of time. So I decided to drop it for this year and I'll do it again next year. Um, however, yes, the issue, because I'm still going to do that research module. Um, how how do I, same as uh, Matapelo has indicated, if I'm not mistaken, how, how do you choose a topic where do you begin um, as far as a, a psychology related topic because I, I should think that um, many topics have been researched before so how do you know which area needs research or do you just thumbs up um, a research area or research topic. Where do you start? Mm. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that that is helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to all of you who have uh, who have really contributed to this. Now, now I know. Maybe we're starting at the at the at the. You know, I, I know where to start, and it's a pity that I did not uh, prepare for for choosing the topic as a point of departure. But nothing nothing stops us from talking about that. If 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 most of you, so am I still audible? It looks like I've lost audio. Yes, Prof. Um, yes, can hear you. Yeah, still oh. audible, Prof. Oh, okay. Sorry, I sometimes I get the signal on my on my side, and then I think that I'm I've, I've I've lost everybody on the platform. But let's just maybe entertain for for a, for a time being the 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 choosing of a, a a researchable topic. Or if you don't mind, we can start with what you want to start with, and then come back to the issue of of choosing a, a topic so it, it will be up to up to us really to, to to determine our agenda for the day i want to go to the topic that we've just started off with on choosing research on how to choose a research topic guide these are just some guidelines so i think i'm i'm taking you from what you've just said in, prepa in, in preparing for this conversation. Now, let's look at 
the guides, and and this is for you, Matabelo, to note, uh, and maybe as as you raised it initially, so you can note and see if this will be of of any assistance to you, and 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 you uh, you know also is it Tamalani? Uh, if I pronounce your name wrong, please yes. pardon me. Tamalani. Yeah. Maybe this is where we can start just to assist the, the you know, the honor students. Now, I'm giving you the seven guidelines. And this is also for the, for the, for, for, for those of you who are currently working on your literature review. I think it was in Ngoniwe. Now, this is one source that we are using. There is different sources that can give you more or less. So I'm just saying this is seven um, guidelines. Sorry, bro. Yes. So I'm I'm unable to see your screen. I don't know, maybe because if I'm using the phone. Okay. I don't know what to do. I'm sharing. So I'm not sure whether other other students are also struggling. Maybe it's the phone story. Are you are other students able to see the seven guidelines choosing research topics slide? Yes, you can see, Prof. I'm also using a phone, but I'm able to see the screen. Oh, okay, all right. So then it's not it's not on my side. It's it's on your side. Uh, if you can't see the slide, Prof, there's. I'm gonna. Yeah. Sorry, Prof. I'm gonna leave yeah. and then rejoin. Oh, okay. I also I'll, I'll do that. I think I also have that problem. I'm on. I'm still on the postgraduate pro workshop program screen. Oh, I'll your, try screen, to your screen hasn't moved. Okay, let's see. So yes. your screen hasn't okay. moved. Let's yes, see. I'll try to disconnect and reconnect again. Okay. I'm seeing the same, the same uh, right now. You see, what are you seeing now? The postgraduate workshop program. Oh, okay. I don't know. So maybe the so the slides doesn't move on your side. Yes. No. no. Okay, anybody who sees this, I'll tell you what, what, what to look for now. Anybody who sees a slide seven guidelines, choosing research topic right now? Yes, Prof, I can see it. Yes, I can see it. So what do you do with those that are still stuck on the first slide, on the slide that we have moved away from? Maybe let's give them just one minute to, to connect because I, yeah. also want them, I also want them to, I also want them to hear the, the 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 guidance on how to choose a research topic. So, all right. Now, research begets more research. So, in other words, when you do research, you 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 sort of give birth to more research. It is the reason why, whenever you read a research report, you almost always going to hear another researcher adding or suggest, making suggestion on what needs to be researched further, because as, as they say, research begets more research. Now, I just wanna share with you the seven principles or guidelines that you can use as a student to, to pick a topic. Because remember, as a student, you want a topic that is researchable, that is, that is possible and feasible, to research. So I'm giving you the seven principles. And again, as I said, this is by a source. You can come up with your own source. The first thing you do is look around you as, as a student. In many disciplines, whatever you are doing, whatever subject that you are looking into, there is a lot of questions that need answers. In other words, there's a lot of phenomena. This is the plural of phenomenon that needs some explanation. That is what you will find everywhere. Every day you can find anything to explain. I mean, the, the impeachment of the public protector. For those of you who are in, in, in many fields, that can be a, a study on its own, including you know, what are the ramifications, what you think about it, how is it been done, and so on and so on. Everywhere, every day, whenever you leave, you're always going to find some questions that need answers. So as a researcher, look around you. But if, if, if you are a researcher, you're also going to look into your own discipline. I mean, a legal person might want to look at it legally, a, a, a natural science, you know, there's different areas that 
disciplines that you are all focusing on. But every single day, you've got questions that need answers. A cholera in a man's kraal in terms of what causes it and, you know, the impact that it has on any, you know, on the quality of life in there. Load shedding that we're all going through uh, every day, whether it's level six or level five or four or whatever the level, you know, the amount of, does anything, bricks, you know, the impact of bricks into our day-to-day -day lives and all that. So whichever angle you want to come from, the, the quality of life and the cost of living, if you are, you know, coming from an economic point of view and, you know, anything else. Today we were just in one meeting where they're, 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 they're discussing about the resuscitation of uh, school sports and and so on. So it's it's just too many issues that you can think about. Read the existing research literature about the topic. I mean, you were saying right now, uh, Manganani, that Thangana, sorry, Thamalan, that um, you were re when you read. No, I don't think it was. I think it was. No, it wasn't you. When that you read a lot about the subject and you get confused. It is important to read the existing literature about the topic that you want to research, to, found, to find out what things are already known. In other words, as you read, you will realize that you pick up that things that, things that are already known by, by, by people before you and those who have done research before and those who have written books about it and believed about your topic. So that just assists you in realizing that you are not alone in the, the the chosen topic or the problem that you will, you are, you've got interest in seek advice of experts again once you feel that you've got an idea of what you want to study you can then seek advice from experts you know you can ask an expert as to what needs to be done now when you say experts when when we talk about experts we just, sometimes we just mean people that you 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 interact with some of them could be your work colleagues some of them could be your lecturers some of them could be your friends and so on but these are people who might be having a much more knowledge deeper knowledge of the subject that you want to study because they will they will they will ask questions but in asking questions they will also be giving you guidance on what to look for you also can ask about what are the burning questions that are still out there not answered so in other words, you are looking at, if you are going to be researching this topic, what are those areas that are more of concern than, than the others you, you know, that, that you are interested in? What are the previous research uh, findings that did not make sense? So in other words, you are asking this question in order for you to refine and to make sure that the chosen subject or the chosen topic is more impactful when you when you go out and do it. The other area that you can consider is to attend conferences. So, so this is the area where researchers love the most, conferences, because the researchers have got great success finding new research projects at conferences. So when you attend conferences and you are listening to areas of that are of interest to you, that's where you pick up a lot of you know researchable topics that you can pursue. Conferences are a place where novice researchers, in other words, beginners, make contact with more experienced researchers. You ask questions, you share ideas, you exchange email address. So it's an opportunity also to network on what are the areas that you might take interest in. And you can also get people who can mentor you as well. The fifth guideline is that you then have to Choose the topic that intrigues and motivates you. The last thing you want as a researcher is to choose a topic that bores you. Because if you're bored by the topic, you're not going to really be excited when you, if it takes long, then you, along the way you get demotivated. So as you read the professional, the literature, as you attend conferences, and as you speak to experts, you uncover a number of potential research problems. But at some point, you need to pick one of them yourself 
and your selection should be based on what you personally want to learn more about. So you have to take interest in what you want to study because it must be something that intrigues you to sustain you as a researcher so that it, if you take two years or you know a year or however long, it's out of interest of the topic that you shall have taken. So remember, the project that you, you'll be, the research that you'll undertake may take months or a couple of years. So if it does not intrigue you, if it does not interest you, in the next year, month or two, you lose interest, that means the whole research project that you wanted to undertake has collapsed. And then you need to choose a topic that others will find interesting and worthy of attention. So when you engage people, you will get a sense as to whether or not the topic is of interest to people. Because if you say to somebody, you know, I'm currently busy uh, with a research on, then people are listening to you and they say, wow, this is very interesting. And they start engaging you. That is also the, you know, a motivation on its own. So if your research adds an important piece to what is known by, by, by us, and you understand about the, the, the world, then you will want to share your findings with a larger audience because the, 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 the purpose amongst others of doing research really is to solve societal problems. So if your topic is of interest to all of us or to many audience, they may then gather to come and listen to what is it that you are going to share with them uh, from a research point of view, because it's of interest to them. So that's another area that you need to think about that is this topic that you know will be of interest and worthy of the attention by others. So if I were to invite people tomorrow and say, look, I want to share my research findings on hesitancy amongst uh, people in relation to the vaccine, for example. It, it might be something that is of interest to a particular discipline, the public health, uh, for, you know, for example, the public health, uh, uh, public health, uh, environment, they may be interested in listening to why is it that there, there was hesitancy or there is hesitancy amongst people on issues of vaccine. Be realistic about what you can accomplish as well. As a student, you need to remember that you are doing this within a, you are doing the research within a very strict timeline. So much time will, you know, how much time will it take to you, you to collect the necessary data? So you need to be mindful of those. How, how long are you going to take to collect data? Will you need to travel great distances to get the data? So in other words, are you going to study a phenomenon where you need to get information throughout South Africa, or you're just going to collect it within your environment where you can just walk in and walk out you know, on a, on a, on a daily basis? Will you need expensive equipment? Because sometimes as students, you start with, the most sophisticated research, and then you realize you actually won't be able to afford the equipment to do that, which that that you know the instrument that you may need to collect and analyze data. So a simple way of doing it might just be what you are looking for. Will a project require knowledge and skills far beyond those you currently have? Look at yourself and think, okay, will I be able to provide the knowledge and the skill? far below, I mean, above what I already know in terms of skills and knowledge, or am I, have I pitched it in a level where on my own, I'll be able to engage and be able to make sense, uh, you know, to <clears throat> whoever else that will be the subject of my study. Again, most research problems are too large. You know, when, when, when the problem is too large, you need to find a way to try to make it less complex. Because if you've got a very large or complex problem, for example, some students will give you a topic that covers more than one problem, you know? So the best thing to do really is to try to see if you can subdivide your, your topic into, into uh, other topics, but you've got the main, the main topic there. So again, don't make it too complex. And, and also don't make it too large, you know? Choose a topic that you find very interesting and that can also be worthy of attention by, by, by others. Choose a topic that intrigues you, that in other words, that excites you. Um, look around you, you know? Talk to people that, 
you think might actually provide you with an expert advice. Attend me, you know, conferences like this kind of discussion that we have now, where amongst yourself as student, you are engaging, you know. And, and of course, as we said, you need to read existing literature about a chosen topic. I hope that 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 helps a little bit. Is there any any question or any comment this far on how to choose the topic? You can read more about this, but this is just one of the the seven guidelines that you can share. Obviously, there could be more sources. Others can say it's five, it's four. The number of 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 areas will not matter. What matters is this is just a way to guide on a selection of a topic. Any any question, any comment? I think now we we need to engage. We've we've opened up now. Silo, what do you have to say? Mulen, what do you have to say about those seven guidelines that you just shared now? Thank why you, is no that? Comment. Why is that? We just no, shared seven, have... seven guidelines and you don't have any comment. Sorry? Yeah. It's still you just explained everything. Have you chosen a topic yourself? Yes, I have it. What is your topic? It's an analysis of water wise education. Analysis of, of? Of water wise uh, education programs from the selected garden centers in Chopek. Okay, so you are going to analyze, you are going to conduct an analysis. <laughs> I need to find out is when you do research, is it compulsory for one to go out or there can be such a thing as a desktop research when you read and read and go to a library and and do a lot of reading and put together. Do you really need to go out and approach certain people? Is as I said, I'm still learning. So I just need to be guided on that on that aspect, please. Okay, it's not compulsory to do research is what you are investigating, uh, by the way. So depending on what is it that you're interested in, you can do, you don't necessarily have to go out, but remember the type of research that you do will dictate how you are going to have to collect data. I mean, if, if, if Abigail was able to hear us, I was going to ask her, what instrument is, is she going to use to conduct an analysis? Because if you say you're going to analyze something, for example, then, then the, what comes to mind is you're going to put that which you, you know, whatever the phenomenon into an analysis. So that was going to be an instrumentation question for me. But yeah, for me, it doesn't matter. If you want to do document research, you can because the evidence or the, the data that you're going to collect might be li linked to documents, but you can't decide that I'm not going to go out or I'm going to go out. The, the approaches or the type of research that you're going to tell uh, to do will, will dictate how you're going to go about uh, doing that. So in other words, the strategy will tell you whether or not you need to interview or not interview. But remember, when you do research, depending on which field or discipline you are in, you may also do research where you don't necessarily need to go talk to people, but you can just analyze documents. Yes, you can. But for me, it's, it's, it's a premature question in that we don't know what you will be studying, you know, because you might then say, okay, I don't want to interview people, but I actually want to understand the hesitancy uh, around vaccine. Now, for that, I can already, you know, seeing you talking to people and say, would you be would you be keen to take a vaccine? Yes or no, kind of, you know. So you may not interact with them physically, some of them, but you may interact with them through instruments such as questionnaires, you know. So yeah, but that's 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 just a general comment because we are not necessarily dealing with a particular uh, a particular problem at the moment. Now let's look at in research. In, in, in research, you are going to hear something called hypothesis. Now, you know, when you, when you are a researcher and sometimes you speak, you realize that you actually speak to yourself because if you say to somebody, you know, I'm now going to test the hypothesis, you have not said much that can really 
uh, make for a civil conversations among friends. So if you are now going to do research, the other thing that you need to understand is what is called a hypothesis. In research, that's what we do. We test a hypothesis. So I was just trying to get into the hypothesis that if you are a research student, you need to use this, this terminology because if you don't use it, you're not going to remember what it is, you know, when you're confronted with a proposal where you need to put together a hypothesis. Now, for example, in this context, we want to say how a proposition or a conjecture can be formulated and tested. So when, when, when we, 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 we talk about the hypothesis, it's really a conjecture. It's something that has not yet been tested yet. And when you say tested, we mean it has not been tested through a process of research. We don't mean a test as in you know, writing an examination or something. So it is a proposition. It is an assumption or is a preliminary statement of relation between two or more variables or things that need to be explained or examined. So basically you are saying, is there a relationship? Is there any impact? Is there any effectiveness? You know, you're looking at variables. You're looking at two or more variables. If, if you say, if I say to you, do you think there is a, a relationship between attending the workshop and doing better uh, in the subject? I'm, I'm testing two things at the same time. Now it is it is up to a researcher to then go and test whether indeed the workshops have anything to do with your performance. So, but but we can make a positive or a negative suggestion that there is a there is a relationship or there's no relationship. So so research will either support or fail to support a theory. So we may actually say, well, come through this program that UNISA is putting for you throughout the year and let's see whether you have done well or you have not done well. But remember, the doing well or the not doing well are not only limited to the fact that you are attending. I mean, you may be attending and be struggling, like you know, getting the message across or not being able to convey the message or struggling with glitches like uh, Abigail is struggling and so on. All those factors at the end of the day will, will, will count when you talk about research. So you can't simply say, well, I attended the whole year, but I got nothing out of it. Or I attended the whole year and I aced the subject. It may be, you know, to do with a whole range of other variables that may not necessarily be this hypothesis. So, but it is important to say if everything else then has been taken care of, we can we can then say we tested the hypothesis beyond doubt. So hypotheses are tentative proposition that we put forth to assist in guiding the investigation of a problem. So when you are going to investigate the problem, you already put in a hypothesis that you're going to go in and check you know, the extent to which it is, it is confirmed or not confirmed. So basically, you give a logical supposition you know, or a reasonable guess, a, an educated guess that would, you, know, you can call it if you like. It, it, it does provide for a tentative explanation for a phenomenon that you're going to investigate. So this is what the hypothesis does. It, it, can, it can confuse you unless you understand that it has got two different meanings, of course, in literature. The, the other meaning is the research hypothesis. The second one is the statistical hypothesis. So if you are then going to do qualitative study, you will know that they are not necessarily uh, gen, you know, testing hypotheses, but they're generating hypotheses. So for those of you who are more qualitative, you know that you don't necessarily have to, gen to, to test the hypothesis, but you're going to generate the hypothesis. So basically you're going to tell us there is a relationship between A and B, whilst on the quantitative side, somebody would want to determine the extent of the relationship between A and B, that there's a 60% relationship, there's a positive relationship, there's a negative relationship, or the degree to which the relationship does exist. Anyone who, who still wants to share their understanding of a hypothesis, they, I don't imagine that there will be a question to say define a hypothesis in, a, in an examination in a research environment, but it is just for me to hear what is your understanding of the, the, the concept of 
a hypothesis. None of you are hearing for about this concept for the first time, of course. But the question that I have is that how clear is it becoming to you now that you can also be able to use it whenever you are confronted with a, a question about it? Samalan? Yes, Prof. Um, okay, what I need to find out, at the end of your research, so you have to go back to your hypothesis to say you are supporting it or you are finding a different or something that um, disputes that hypothesis. Is that the purpose of a hypothesis? Yes, well, that you got it. I mean, at the end, it's not you who's going to say that, that the kind of data that you shall have collected and analyzed will tell you whether or not you're confirming or is not confirmed. That's what the research does. So you test it. And it is the okay. outcome of the test that will determine whether or not there is. I mean, if you say there's a positive relationship between training and performance, and you take us through training and you assess performance afterwards, you are, you, are, you, are, you are determining whether or not training does influence performance. So you can come back and say, oops, you know what? Despite the fact that I invested so much in training, I still don't get a good performance. So there's no relationship between training and performance. That's just an extreme example that I can I can use at the moment. Hope it makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. So you um, don't can I ask? It. you don't confirm it that the, the data and the analysis will be the one that uh, you know sort of give you an indication of whether or not it's confirmed or not. But go ahead. Oh, thank you, Prof. Now how do I handle a situation where during the during the research process I discover something else that will maybe take me in a different direction? What do I do in that case? A different what, what? direction from the hypothesis that I had initially formulated i'm not sure i'm not sure i understand the question what do you do when 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 what happens um let's say um let's say for instance i say i'm, I'm just giving an example um yeah. hiv um causes AIDS yes. and then during my research I find out that uh, no actually it's not HIV it's something else yes that, that's the hypothesis isn't it you, now your now is it your data is telling you that it is not HIV that causes AIDS that's the, now you're using you're, you're testing it and you're getting different kind of uh, information yes am i am i understanding you wrong yes yes you are understanding me correctly okay so I then you will come out then you will come out and remember your hypothesis your assumption was uh, a causes b now now you go you collect the data um i always say to my friends it depends who i talk to you, you know sometimes it's data sometimes it's data it depends now, your, 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 your kind of data that you shall have collected tells you that, but that would have been a scientific and, you know, scientific collection of data using the right instrument, assuming. Then you can come back and say, despite this, this is what you have found. So, yes, that's basically the essence of science, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it science is about telling us exactly what are the facts as they are without you really tampering with them just to show honesty and your ability to interpret that data? Because that's that's what science does, really. It tells us, science tells us that, um, you know, when, I, when we're still doing face-to-face, -face, there was this uh, interest students that will, will talk about the, the product, Lama Futa. 
Now, what 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 marketing and what science can say can be different, two different things. That, for example, it might be the, that it makes you lose weight. But the extent to which that is that is accurate and that is scientifically correct, it's irrelevant because it might be just a marketing, uh, uh, you know, arrangement. So, so you need to understand the difference between a marketing strategy and the real science. And it is the real science sometimes that that is more unpopular than the the branding and the and and the sales uh, pitching businesses. I hope it makes sense, uh, Shamala. I, I'm not. I don't mean to. Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. It does make sense. So, so, th so, so you need to understand then, as a person, uh, and as a researcher, that not everything that you consume has got the intended consequences because it's a. It might be a marketed, a uh, product that is so well marketed that you are convinced that it's actually as good. So, at the end of the day. The extent to which we measure you and the association with weight loss might be that there is no evidence, no signs uh, whatsoever. Now, what then do you do? It doesn't mean then, oh, sorry, well, I have not lost weight or I'm, I've gained a weight. It's just to say with science, you need an element of what you call internal validity. The extent to which you've got no doubt that A and B have a relationship. So. The relationship is what you are then going to determine beyond doubt that the, you know the reason why A is in the way that it's behaving is because B has had the, the effect on it. So that's what science does. That's what you are really now moving into in your, in your careers. So when you say it's a hypothesis, we simply say it is the supposition that you put and you go and test. So you're going to test the extent to which the product assists in, in weight loss. I mean, so I'm using one product, but there could be, there's a thousand and thousands of products in the, in the, in the world that may or may not necessarily be what they are. We, we just got to know now that the, some of the products that we're using during COVID were not giving us the efficacy that was being said to be. That's, 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 that's amazing because what it does then is the kind of research that were conducted at the time was biased. And sometimes research, remember, get bored by companies that want you to, to come up with certain outcome to suit certain products. So we all know now that so, some of those products did not do what we thought they would do during COVID. And unfortunately, it is, it is one of those things that research will, will, will always be a contested uh, area by, by researchers all over the world. Let, let's just, I think we need to go back now and look at, because what we are talking about is the science. Science is concerned with testing ideas, opinions against observed facts. So when we say this is based on scientific knowledge, we mean is empirical, and it's evidence-based. So there's evidence to prove what you are talking about. Whilst on the other hand, non-scientific knowledge is about, authentic, you know, is about debates, is about traditions, is about accidents and so on. Now, what is then, uh, you know, epistemology? This is a big word, but I always say, if you, you, you want to make it simple, you say it's the science of knowing. So epistemology is the science of knowing based on two, you know, methodology. And methodology, you know, every time you hear some, some, some researchers presenting their papers or argument, they always use the terminology of research methodology. So the science of knowing is built on the methodology, which is a subfield of epistemology. In other words, is the science of finding out. How did you find out that these and these have got the relationship. Now, when you build a science of knowledge, sorry, a science of knowing, you need to build it on the basis that you also go out and find. So curious people always have a methodology that they will apply to know. Epistemology, therefore, is concerned with the question of what is 
or should be regarded as acceptable knowledge in a discipline. So all of you, wherever you are now, you've got a discipline that you are following and it has got acceptable knowledge. So if you are in an accounting, there's an acceptable knowledge within accounting. If you are in commerce, if you are in law, if you're in psychology, all those have already have the science of knowing because they it is it is regarded as acceptable knowledge in a discipline. So a central question is whether or not the social order can and should be studied according to the same principles, the same procedures, the same ethos as the natural sciences. Now we all know that there's a difference between natural sciences and social sciences. So all these concepts are important for you as a, as, as, as a student to, to navigate around to understand that if, we, if somebody says it's epistemology, you know that is the science of knowing and the methodology is how is that, you know, the, how do you find out that there is this relationship between A and B or there's no relationship between A and B or how did you find out that there is no uh, evidence between the following? So that's, that's just the, methodological uh, discussion. I'm going to request that we take three minutes. Uh, the science of adult learning is that when we are, we, 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 we are doing this kind of work, basically every 45 minutes, we need to take a break to absorb the knowledge. Now that is science. Otherwise what then happens is you just talk and occasionally people doze off and they'll doze off at different points because everybody has their own uh, concentration span. So I want us to take a, a five minutes, just a break, and then we come back. We, we continue with the rest of the discussion on research. What is research, ladies and gentlemen? We hear this, this every day when we walk, we, 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 we talk, we walk, we we find people say, I've done research, I know. Um, now, here we are just going to try to simplify for ourselves what, what we are talking about throughout the, the, the program. So science is an, is an everyday word. Every day you hear people say, yeah, but I've, I've done research and it's used by practicing scientists, men on the street, journalists, and, and of course, uh, lecturers at the university, all of whom assume they know what is meant by science. At least it's a, ma it's a manner that is sufficient for them to communicate, in a manner that is sufficient for them to communicate meaningfully with others. So we use this, this, this concept every day that, you know, research or science in, in a day-to-day -day basis that I've done a study, you know, I've realized that the metro, metro rail is no longer as good as it used to be and so on. But for the purpose of us understanding science is that we are going to use this observation, collection, and analysis of facts. So when we talk about research, really, we mean you are going to, to apply you know, observation, collection, and analysis of facts. So when you do all that, you are now moving into science. Because a science, you know, when we talk about science, we, we talk about a system a systematic process. The process is systematic, it's not accidental, it's not a buzzard. It's a systematic process of collecting, of analyzing, and of interpreting information or data. In order to increase our understanding of a phenomenon about which you are interested or concerned about. So in other words, if you go out and you look at a phenomenon, and you now go and, 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 and develop a proposal that give us an outline on how you are going to collect data, how you are going to analyze and interpret it in order to make us understand. Then you are moving into what you call science. So research is not a blind excursion into the unknown. So you don't just walk, bump into something and say, okay, this is now research, with the hope that data necessary to address the research problem will magically emerge. So it's not, it's not accidental. You know, you it's, it's not something that you do by accident. It's a carefully planned itinerary of the route you intend to take in order to reach your final destination. So in, in research, for example, uninterrupted data are worthless. They can never help us 
answer the questions we, we you know that have been posed and then why do we do research we do research a detailed study of a subject in order to discover information or reach new information so that's one way that's one reason why we do research we want to discover information or reach new information a scholarly or scientific inquiry to gain knowledge or enhance understanding that's what research is so you are, you want to to enhance understanding of a certain phenomenon or you want to gain knowledge it can be new knowledge or to improve the knowledge that is already there you can imagine how research was done many many years ago right now with the with the advent of technology and the the the, the data analytics that are coming on board i mean i'm sure the 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 the, the analysis of massive data has become much more easier than it would have been some years years many many years ago it's a process of gathering info for the purpose of initiating or modifying a phenomenon so what we knew then about research and what we know today are quite significant in that a lot has improved so research seeks to answer questions about the social order or solve problems you know in the in the world uh, I mean, every discipline now that we are in, a new discipline that came, that emerged afterwards, will, can all attest to the fact that some decades or so ago, those who were doing research did not were not exposed to the same amount of technology and the techniques and the resources that we are we are currently seeing the current researchers being exposed to. So over the years things have developed and things have been able to improve for the better and they will still be improving because as we say right now people are using artificial intelligence a lot more to do research and actually to 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 to, to analyze massive amount of data which had it not been for for technology perhaps you know it will still be so cumbersome and still so huge that the researchers would still have found the whole exercise frightening some, and of course others found it extremely exciting. Any any questions thus far in terms of uh, those of you who are now excited about the fact that you want to do research, and those that are scared, we can you know we can actually forgive them. Matabel, go ahead. Thank you, Prof. What is considered uninterrupted data? I, it 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 felt like I needed to under I might not understand it as it is interpreted. Can you elaborate more on it, please? Uninterpreted data means you're sitting with hundred people. You you've got something that you want to study, but you just receive the data. It sits with you and you don't interrupt it. Yeah, I mean, sorry, don't interpret it. So because it's uninterpreted, um, it doesn't mean anything. So if you're sitting if you're sitting with data, if you know what you know by way of having received data and you have not interpreted it, it doesn't have uh, any any meaning to all of us because we won't know. It is when the data is interpreted that it has got meaning for us because the interpreter is the one who's telling us, did you know that the the cost of bread has increased tenfold uh, since perhaps post COVID. That's information that is useful for a consumer. But if you're just sitting with it somewhere, you know that there's been some increases and you are not able to interpret it for us, it won't ma make any sense. It's, it's data that has not been, that is not interpreted. Am I confusing you more? No, sir, I'm all clear, thank you. Oh, okay. So basically what you're saying is, if I say right now here, and I say, okay, there is about 20 of us, um, so many females, so many males, and we look at what you are all studying. If I don't interpret all that, it, there's, it's meaningless. Basically, it's just to say, don't collect data for the sake of collecting it. Collect it with a view to interpret it, analyze it, so that you can share it with those you know, that may find that information helpful and useful for the purpose of just improving the knowledge and insight and gaining more insight about it. Okay, Anele, 
yes, uh, I'm still in the middle of my study. Yeah, but there were big delays on my side uh, in terms of submitting, but I submitted uh, to the ethics now. I'm waiting for them to to say something, uh, maybe grant uh, clearance, then I will move on. What is but, your, your, your what is your your research about? Uh, my I'm doing a doctoral with the University of Northwest. I'm I'm developing a program. My topic says a developmental social work program in response to gender-based violence in the two selected townships of Johannesburg, a study of Alexandra and Deep Slot. Oh, I think we uh, we once engaged, haven't we, Anele? We did. <laughs> and yeah, last, I last year. Yeah, but, I, seem uh, to remember, I seem to remember that. Yes. So have you managed now to prune it to to a level where you want it to be researchable and so you know the topic was the topic was fine accepted uh, just that it's been back and forth uh, uh, process uh, because yeah it's not it's not a length uh, it's not a very short period as I thought sorry a, a process as I thought. Um, because at the University of Northwest, a social health department is under Faculty of Health Sciences. I so our, propo our, our proposals are reviewed by people who don't understand the social work point of view that we are coming from. OK. So that is, those are the delays, because they will say, change this. Why can't you consider this? And you find that, that whatever that they suggest in the, in the panel is more likely to take you to a wrong direction or to the direction that you never thought of. I see. Yes. So yeah, but I'm I'm fine. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, yeah, that's it. So so what is your if if you are now sitting with all of us here today and we grappling with this concept of research and science, what can you say? I mean, you have gone through, you have gone through some pages of, of, of frustrations in the proposal writing and and all that which you are now sharing. What 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 is your overall? We are all students now, excited that you are doing our honors. Some of us are going to study proposals. Uh, some of us have got started the proposal. Now we are seated here in a workshop. What can you? What is your? What is your brotherly expert advice, you know, as one of those guidelines for the how to choose the researchable topic? I mean, you have gone through Deep Sleuth, Alexander and all that. What can you tell us not to panic? Uh, I think um, for, for most and, 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 the, and the important uh, issue, what that I want to say is that because when you speak to when you speak, when you speak about research to a student, a student will panic uh, because I don't know whether they reg we regard it as a difficult journey uh, that we never crossed because we hear people saying research is difficult, research is that, the research is that. My belief is that let me do it, let me test it. Whether is it going to be defeating me or am I going to be defeating this? Because um, I remember when I was doing my master's at the University of Pretoria. Uh, I think for me, that was, that, was the, that was the best decision to take or to do, to say, let me go, because I didn't do my, my, my undergrad degree with them. So I wanted to explore that, okay, how are they doing it in terms of the research and so on. So, but I can tell you that whatever that I gained from that university made me the person that I am today because I, want, I was willing to learn, I was willing to, to engage, to say, 
what if I, I do it like this? What if I do? Because I, I think we, we as a student, we need to have a room to say, let us learn more than being, because you cannot be a perfect, a per, you cannot be a, a, a perfect in the research until you become part and engage on it. And more especially in social science re re research, they are very technical terms that we use. Uh, and, and then now it will require you to go back and say, what does this term mean? Meaning on your own, you need to get to know what are those terms mean? And then in, when you apply it in, a, in, in context, how are you going to do it? Because the research is about how uh, are you going to do what? So yeah, so to students, I would want to say they must not fear anything. They can do, they can still do this because uh, mostly you will you will do research under a, a certain supervision by somebody. So give it all, give it give it all the time, uh, and then start to focus on on what you need to do. And give and keep that good relationship with the person that is going to be your supervisor or that is supervising you in 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 your research study. All right, that that, that sounds good, uh, Anel. The only thing you didn't do, for all of <laughs> us, is that you, you never you never acknowledged Unisa. In which context? The... No, I'm saying you you were talking about the University of Pretoria. You're talking about Northwest. I, I haven't heard you saying anything about UNISA. Um, I'm I'm not necessarily you, that I don't have sure anything to say. I just want to make sure that Godfrey also ends his, uh, his tip for this work. That <laughs> I mean, I mean, probably you've been doing a lot of work in terms of uh, these sessions, uh, making sure that the students are engaged on, on, the, on research. I mean, you 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 tried by since last year you tried by all means that the students are getting enough uh, adequate knowledge in terms of the research uh, uh, and and its technicalities. Uh, I can uh, uh, I can say I I I appreciate that uh, because I believe that these sessions will continue empowering the students at UNISA because. The students at UNISA, they need more, more empowerment because UNISA is a distance learning. So yeah, no, so I, I believe I believe in that context. No, 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 that's so true. And and once more, we we I mean I was just I was just really pushing you, but you are right. <laughs> One of the most uh, difficult thing, you know, is being a UNISA student having to do research because, you know, distance learning is is not is not is not an easy thing, and therefore. I, I really applaud uh, all of you when you make time to to attend sessions like this. The timing is very short, yes, but it's still better than really not uh, being in class every day. Because there are those who are in class every day, you know, learning all these concepts every day. You know, you are doing it just on the basis of the fact that Unisa Johannesburg has created a slot like this. But be that as it may you're still doing a great, great job because I think when you up, you move and there has been a very, very good return from, from the students. But thanks for, for sharing with us all that. Uh, Anel, I do recall uh, our, our engagement last year uh, on the selection of the, the sites and so on and so on. But good luck with, with your, your, your PhD as well. One of the 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 comment i want to make is that this country is in dire need uh, of researchers uh, you know and unfortunately some students you know finish when they do their undergraduate we never get to see them others just get up to an honors level like some of you here and then you know you are done and then we you know some students actually push up to a master's level and they're like okay thank you very much I am that. So, so the fact that there is no, well, maybe let me let me not let me not put the wrong hypothesis here. Uh, what I'm trying to suggest is that some students study just because they want to achieve a qualification, which is good, 
but there are some students who feel that, you know what, one notch above the, the, the undergraduate is okay. That there are not many students who are saying, I want to achieve a qualification that will make me contribute in a big way to, 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 to this country, South Africa. So as a result, you'll find that there are very few scholars and very few writers in this country. And hopefully, uh, some of you at UNISA will take the challenge that uh, uh, Godfrey is giving you that you need to really push uh, because they do offer doctoral, masters and honors uh, workshops. So there's no reason why some of you need to stop. I do know th though that uh, studying can also be such a lonely, a lonely journey. And I'm sure Anela, you can confirm. Once you start, you know, doing studies like this, you know, it makes it difficult to still keep some of your old friends. So yeah, it can be, it can be very, it can be such a lonely journey. Am I? Yes, am I, I can, I can, I can attest to that. Um, it's true because uh, people will not understand uh, what you are doing. I remember uh, uh, when I when I was still uh, had the thought uh, of doing. Uh, my master's, uh, somebody said, uh, you are a social worker by profession. So what do you do? How are these masters going to assist you uh, so that you can go higher and higher? I said to her, hey, it's not about me getting higher positions, but it's, me, it's about me getting to be developed in the field of social work. Because when I'm getting my master's, more, it's obvious that I will be more advanced than you. That is the, that is the basis number one because I have I I I acquired more knowledge than you in your level. So whatever that I'm going to be talk, talking about me and you, uh, you will not understand me at some point because it will require somebody who has a critical thinking and analysis at the back of the mind. So I continued with all those things, but people are are are, are they 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 demotivate us uh, in any ways to say how is it going to help you all the all those things but we are not going to stop we are we should be fighting and continuing until we get where we want to be great so please take note this is uh, another student like all of us talking um you not you not study for your promotion you, you study to gain new knowledge to contribute uh, significantly to society and if needs be to become your own researcher, you know, where you do research and publish your own uh, work. So some of you, I know that uh, as a result of study, you might be promoted, but if that is what it is, it means to you, yes, good luck. But over and over and above that, I just want to encourage you to, to do more because as I said, this country is in dire need of new knowledge, uh, new understanding and new innovative ways of doing things. Now, you can't then rely on the 1980 methodologies uh, in, this, in, this, in this day and age. Okay, enough with the motivation. Let's see what are the three purposes of research. There are three common and useful purposes that of, of research that we can share. One is exploration, description, and explanation. So when you do research, you're either going to do any of the three. It's either you're going to explore, you're going to describe or you're going to explain a phenomenon, you know? So, so that's what research does. Uh, we, we, we look at it to say, is it an exploratory study? Is it a descriptive study? Is it an explanation of an, a phenomenon? And that's all we look at. So explanatory research is why things are the way they are. The predictive research is such as a human behavior in the workplace to use, inform, or to screen job applications. So you predict that this kind of caliber of employee that I've got is able to contribute or not. Before designing your study, you must define the purpose of your project. What kind of study will you undertake? Exploratory, descriptive, or explanatory? Are you going to explain something? Are you going to explore something? Are you going to explain something? And earlier on, one student asked, can I do my study without without talking to people. Well, you need to determine, are you exploring something 
or are you describing something or are you explaining something that's the reason why we're saying it will depend on what what is it that you are what is the purpose of your research so you can't then say well i don't want to interview people but i want to explore or i don't want to interview but i want to describe i want to explain. you first have to be clear as to what is the purpose of your research so exploratory studies for example are appropriate for more persistent phenomena something that happens over and over you know you you just want to understand why is this happening exploratory studies are typically done for three purposes one to satisfy the researcher's curiosity so you're curious every time you turn around there's something that 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 you know is bothering you and desire for better understanding. So you want to understand it at workplace. You know, every time you switch off your computer, tomorrow when you wake, you know, you go, you switch it on. It looks like you've got, uh, you know, something a, a phenomenon that is a, that that creates curiosity. So you just want to satisfy your curiosity. You test the feasibility of undertaking a more extensive study. So you're testing whether you want to do more extensive or it's just so basically, you're testing the waters. You do exploratory to see what is the extent of the phenomenon that I would like to study. How big is this problem? You look at homelessness, for example. You thought there's about three people, and you realize there's millions and millions of people. South Africa is currently uh, exploring the, the fact that the sex work is going to be legal work. So, so it's, it's, it's work that anyone can do. With that, then you start, you realize, oh, I thought it's actually here in Pretoria. Oh, no, no, I thought it's in Johannesburg. Then you realize it's actually a global phenomenon. So, it, you know, it's just another exploratory study. It is not a moral, you know, it's not a moral discussion, it's not a political discussion, it's not a legal discussion, it's not an economic, it's just work, the, the new workplace that is being created. Now, as a researcher, you may want to look into that. Or the issues around cannabis, for example, that is going to be uh, commercialized for for recreational use. You know, you can moralize it. You can come from a prohibition point of view that this is bad. You can come from an economic uh, you know perspective where you think it's going to grow the economy. You can come from a legal perspective where you think that the laws have gone to the dogs. You can come from an area. You see, that those are just some opportunities that are there in research because remember when you are a researcher you don't make judgments you 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 let the facts Shamalani, uh, you said it you let the facts speak for themselves you know you you speak less because the facts are the ones that talk otherwise then you know people tend to moralize or they they politicize or they legalize or they you know so as a researcher you're going to, to learn very quickly that you need to reserve your opinions and your views to let the facts speak. The descriptive one, a major purpose of many social science studies is to describe situations and events. So here you observe as a researcher and then you describe what was observed because scientific observation is careful and deliberate. So remember one of the tools of research is observation. So you then give a description of what you have observed and you just state it as it is, you know? Explanation is a third purpose of social science and the idea here is to explain things. Any, any question on the, three, the purpose of why we're doing research? Now, when, we, when you look at the, the summary of everything else, when you look at a, a proposal, this is what, how it will look. Oh no, you didn't tell me that I wasn't on a slide mode. The, the picture that I'm, I'm, I'm giving to you now, it's not the only picture, but it's, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the pictures that you can use when you look at the research proposal. And when you have done all these steps, you will then have a complete proposal with you. I am not sure what is the expectation at your level, 
uh, but maybe the, the only thing that you are required to do is to put your proposal together. And when we look at the proposal, we want to see all these uh, steps, uh, you know, incorporated in your research proposal. They don't necessarily have to be seven steps, but they need to be steps nonetheless, that the first thing you do, you know, it looks like this. So anyone who has done a proposal so far and having gone through these steps, do you mind to share? I will exclude Anela for now. So that we we engage on the on the steps of a proposal writing. And what is your understanding? Ntapo, can you can you hear us? I know Baba can hear us and is going to say it's covered. Ntapo? I see in Tlapo, no SP. Okay. <laughs> you know the, the beauty of uh, the beauty of online is that you might be sitting with people who are not necessarily participating in the in the room uh, watching watching what place this time in this time of the day if you don't have load shedding. Uh, I'm wondering. Um, uh, yes, go ahead. And Tapo, and Tapo had indicated in the chat that uh, hi, so, hi, Pro. Sorry for not responding. I'm listening, struggling with load shading. Network is poor. I constantly move for better signal. That's what Tapo said in the chat box. Probably hence his silence. Oh, I see. I see. Take us through the steps then, uh, Matabelo. What is your understanding of this step? I'm saying there are seven steps, but you can make them four, five. It doesn't matter the number of steps. It's just the steps that are necessary. Abigail has also said, uh, I now can't get a single weight. So I'm not sure what Abigail is. I think she's, she's gone. Is she still here, Abigail? No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like she's out, Prof. Is she out? Yes. Uh, oh, a pity. Because she couldn't hear us. Um, who else can hear us? I know Matapel can hear us clearly. Uh, I know Anela can hear us clearly. Who else can hear us? Ntombi, are you able to hear us? Is Ntombi not Abigail? Ntombi, can you hear us? Ntombi, can you hear us? We want you to unmute and talk. We want to hear you, if you can. Wow. Hi, Prof. Uh, this is Ntlapo. Uh, sorry for, for being so silent. I'm... No shading where I'm from. We haven't had electricity since from short talk, but I'm still learning. Uh, quite interesting to learn more. Okay. We, we also want to even, learn... Even every slide, so that's why I'm so yeah, quiet. We, that's we, want to learn. we want to learn from you as well. Remember, this is more of a... Echo learning. We learn from each other, uh, and we learn from each now, other because of the different topics like, and so interests. Yes. Okay. Mbali can hear us clearly. Mbali, uh, can you say something because you can hear us clearly? We just want to hear your voice. I will give Matapel an opportunity. Buddy, please say something. We all we all know that as South Africans there are challenges of load shedding. And load shedding no. is another subject of study, I suppose. Yes. Um no prof, I can hear uh, I can hear you clearly and I'm learning a lot because um I guess I'm one of the students that um has been having a really difficult time when it comes to, to doing research. But um, from the information that you have been sharing here, um, at least I'm learning a lot. 
because I'm always second guessing myself when I'm doing research and I always have this thing in my head that I'm not doing it right. Oh, and I end up I reading so much information about how to do research and I end up being confused at times. I see. Yes. Um, Bali, sorry, I, I, I hear you. Um, let me allow Mbali also to comment before I keep my chapter. But other than that, Prof, um, I'm really grateful for um, for all the information that you are you have shared on this platform. Um, so far, I'm actually learning a lot, and I'm going to try to implement everything that I've learned here towards um, succeeding in my um, journey of research. Oh, that's Thank great. You. That's great to hear. That's Thank you. you. Mata, Mata Bello, take it over. Uh, thank you, Prof. I'm just reading through this, uh, the seven steps of research in front of us. I, I, I see that you say um, from point four, five, six, and seven, it talks about the problem and its sub problems. And you had indicated earlier that certain topics can get very big and one would need to to find one focus to 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 talk on. My my question is when you've got a problem and sub problems, isn't it dangerous for you to to put it in one space in in case you get lost in one sub problem instead of talking about the problem? Why would you have a problem and its sub problems? Can you enlighten me better, please? Because I'm already confused. You use you use a very interesting word isn't it dangerous <laughs> i wonder why <laughs> why did you choose that that, that word dangerous <laughs> in this context <laughs> why danger I may danger, ask you of, danger of being going the opposite direction you know when you say you, you are passionate about something you, yeah. you get to a point then you like you you get that point where you are strongly giving it in you invest more in it and neglect and you would find neglecting the rest of of the space because you I focus see. on no. on that so that's where i'm saying the danger is oh, okay. you, you get lost no, no. in your no, own no, no, no. yeah no no i think I, I i get i get where you're going you, you see every problem will when, when, Okay, I'm I'm getting some feedback. Every every problem that you are going to study, every situation that you are going to study, is going to be so broad by itself that you may want to come. I mean, that's the reason why when you interview people, you are not going to interview people for one reason. You are going to interview them for a number of reasons. For example, let's take. Uh, let's take teenage pregnancy, for example. You are not just going to talk about teenage pregnancy without looking at it from different perspectives. You know, is it to do with, uh, what is it has to do with, you know? So there will be a problem, which is the teenage pregnancy, but there will be sub-problems. So you just need to make sure that all the sub-problems are aligned to the main problem. Now, if we look at the seven steps, maybe let's do it quickly. If we look at the seven steps, we say, you've got a research problem. So it will be like your your big problem, or you've got the, an unanswered question. There is a problem of cholera in 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 Haman's cry. So you are not just going to look at Haman's cry in isolation to the quality of water, the quality, the accessibility, and all those different type of sub problems. So so those those are the issues that you are going to look at. But in the in essence, you must remember that you are looking at what caused the cholera in the community of Haman's grass. So you are looking for the, that bacteria and how did it come about? But to the extent that it, it is causing cholera, there will be death, which is a public health concern. There will be the quality of life and so on and so on. All those will be relevant. But remember that the main issue will be the area of the bacteria. So when you've got the problem or a question that you want to answer, you need to have an aim. What is your aim? Is your aim to identify to understand, to explain, to explore, to describe the problem that you are it's, it's confronting the community of Amman's Kral. For example, what, what Anela was talking about is that he's looking at a model that could be applied 
for both Alexander and Dipslo. So it's looking at two communities and maybe trying to see if there's something that can be implemented in those two communities insofar as GBV uh, is concerned. So my assumption is that he is already saying there is a high rate of GBV in those communities as well. So the aim is for him to, the aim from what I'm hearing, and, and this is not an, a, you know, an accurate aim, but the aim, as I understand, is that he would like to get to a point where the people in, I mean, the the, the, the people in Alexander and in Deep Slut could then be assisted through the development of whatever model or whatever intervention that he shall have proposed in his study. Now, when you do a literature review, he, you're reading more about that subject. So you, basically, you'll find as you go into literature review that there are people before you who have done similar kind of work and it's for you to understand that work and to really align your thinking with some of those uh, scholars and, 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 you know, and researchers before you. Because there's no point in you not taking and acknowledging and crediting those that have worked before you uh, in the same kind of area. And it is at this point that you can then do what we refer to as a hypothesis. Then a research design, which is the plan. Now you come up with a plan. In research, we say, we call it a research design. So that basically means it's a research plan. So it's a plan on how you are going to collect and how you are going to analyze data. So when I look at your research design, I need to see how are you going to collect data and how are you going to, 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 to analyze data. At the research design, that's where you spend a lot of time because it is here that you are going to get issues around what type of research are you doing? It is here where you are going to look at what are the research approaches, like your qualitative, your quantitative. It is here where you are going to look at the, the sampling strategy. No, it's not. Oh, okay. I think you you programmed it too early. We're finishing at half past six. Um, now, it is here where you are going to look at what are the, the sampling strategies or designs that I'm going to use. So in research, this is where, well, let's call it step four. This is where you spend enormous amount of time because it's from here, when you go to data collection, it's about those instruments that you're going to use uh, to collect data. Now, in step four, you can even go to an extent of telling us, are you going to use mixed methods, quantitative or qualitative. You know, you, you need to be very clear at that plan level. Then you do analysis of data after you've collected data. Remember we, we said data that is collected and analyzed or un, you know, uninterpreted, uninterpreted it's, it's meaningless. Once you have done all that and you are now directed by that information, you are able to put together a research report. And the research report really chronicle. It just gives us the stages that you've gone through. You know, you are basically documenting what the problem was, you know, what were the aim and the objectives, what kind of uh, literature supported it, you know, what was the research design that were followed, how did you collect data, how did you analyze data. So you tell us all that processes which can lead to now, us understanding the journey that you shall have traveled. So a, a, a research process really is a plan that you lay out on your research. It's almost like an, you know, a plan to say, how are you going to build a house? So when the house has been built, now you're documenting how did you go about it? So essentially, that is what we, we, we mean when you say research proposal. But I want to go back because yesterday I used this example. For those of you who are here, uh, please pardon me for the repetition. Unfortunately, that is the nature of research. I used an example to say, if you don't understand, because students keep on saying sometimes that, look, I have a difficulty in understanding a hypothesis. And I think if we use examples, perhaps it makes it easier. One, I was saying to them, I mean, we all have, uh, uh, you know, energy uh, crisis in this country. So if you walk into your, house now into your flat into your area and you you switch on the plug you know and the light doesn't doesn't get on 
um, what will be your hypothesis the first the first time around? You walk in, you press, and then no light. What 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 are the most what are the 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 the, the most possible assumptions that you will make with that? Anyone? Um, Prof, maybe I, I can assume that uh, we have load shedding. Okay. Secondly, that's an assumption. That's an yes. assumption. Yes. <laughs> um, if if it's a light um, that is um, connected to a socket, um, I'll I'll either check that it is, it is connected and the Socket has been switched on. So if it doesn't, anybody who can take over from there, she's saying if the lights is check if the lights connected to the socket is on, load shading. Anything else? Yes, Williams. Good evening, everybody. So I would assume that um, that the power stripped, that the light bulb might not be working. Um, yeah. So. I think there's a host of things that could possibly um, go wrong. So, so now you you've got all those assumptions, right? Let's let's just ask. Those will be your hypothesis. So, in other words, now you're going to go step by step. I would imagine you're going to say, okay, is it load shading? How would you establish if it's if it's load shading or not load shading? Um. Generally, because we have apps these days, we'll check on the apps to see if we fall within the time of load shedding. Else, you'll check in with your neighbor to see if they, their power's out as well. So that is now you are checking, you are confirming or disputing the hypothesis of load shedding, isn't it? You are now saying it's load shedding. Now you check with your, your app or you check with your neighbor. Now the facts come out that it's not load shedding. What have you done? You have you have disconfirmed the hypothesis. Am I right? That's correct. So that's basically what you're talking about. Now the next thing is okay. It's not load shading. I can confirm that it's not load shading. The reason why I know that it's not load shading is that I've got an app and I check my neighbor. The lights are 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 on with the neighbor. So that then leads you to the next question. You know. It, when you discover the real reason why the lights are not on, that's what the research will tell you that you now know because you now have a fact of 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 data that the reason why the the switch didn't go on is either there was a trip or the bulb was not working or or electricity is finished. So basically that's what a hypothesis in a in, in, in the most example way can can be. You collect data to either affirm or confirm your hypothesis, or you realize very soon that, look, I thought it's load shading, not load shading. I thought it's the power trip is not. I thought is the, is the socket is not. Then the next thing you realize, perhaps is the bulb that is not working. And when you say the bulb is not working, you've got it as, as a fact. So, a hypothesis really is just something that you immediately put up front to go and test. So you have tested the hypothesis. You come out and you, real, you, you agree and you confirm that the reasons are none other than the bulb not working. So most of the time we do the hypothesis unconsciously because it's just a way of life, you know, in, in, some, in some instances. I hope, I hope this has made it much more simpler for, for people to... For, for some of you to understand that when you get to a hypothesis, it may just be, uh, you know, as clear as, as what we are trying to do. If it, it is simplified in such a way that it causes confusion, that will be sad because it was just to simplify it, not to, to really cause more confusion, but to see if it can make your understanding of a hypothesis uh, clearer. Is there any burning question? from any one of you before I hand over to Godfrey. 